And today we'll be talking about the design of the water treatment facility for Warren and Hunterdon counties. First thing I want to talk to you about is who we are and what we have to offer and why we should be working on this job, and that's our vast experience. We also provide all, all of uh, our services in-house, uh, like I said, construction, soils, environment. Uh, we've worked on a few jobs now in the United States, uh, in Colorado. We're working on the water tunnels over in New York City. Um, go to the next slide. And the second thing I want to talk to you about is your need for a new facility. Uh, the first reason you need a new facility is the strain on the existing system, uh, which is minimal at best and mostly, most, uh, we'll call them our customers for now, rely on uh, groundwater, which is just very unreliable, to say the least, and probably not well treated nor maintained. The other reason that you need a new facility is the future expansion that's going to take place over the next couple of years in the area. Uh, we would like to use, uh, take into account these factors and design for this facility to last for, to meet the demands of the next 20 years. Uh, up, up on the board, we have a list of the, re uh, the new areas of construction that will require a good amount of uh, flow in the, water system, in the water supply system, which includes five beverage companies, college campus, uh, lots of houses, buildings, new people moving in. You're going to need a lot more water supply than currently is provided by the systems in place. We're going to design for 20 years, like I said, and we're, gonna, we're taking into account uh, growth rates for both the college and residential areas. The other thing we're designing to meet is the fire flow for the National Board of Fire Underwriters, which requires a minimum flow of 10.5 MGD, which was based on a couple of calculations done by our water resources engineer. Uh, the demand we found will be based on the New Jersey Residential Site Improvement Standards, and we've found this to be uh, 40 MGDs. <clears throat> so originally when we were searching for a site, we were looking at these three things, proximity to highway zoning and the uh, source water quality. But uh, there's more that we actually looked into like, later on in the slides. So, uh, basically, we used Google Earth to uh, find our, our sites. We were, uh, we were looking for a large source water in uh, Warren and Hudson counties, and we basically selected to use the Delaware River, and as uh, you can see here, we have our alternative one site, alternative two site, and our final selected site on, on top. This is our uh, alternative one site. It's located in uh, Lopacon Township in the intersection of Marble Hill Road and River Road. Um, basically, some advantages of this site. Uh, it's in a remote location. It's close to the Delaware River, and there's uh, freight train access. Some disadvantages, though, include uh, there's local roadways to the, uh, to the site only, which uh, creates trouble for uh, construction vehicles and uh, emergency and uh, delivery vehicles. Uh, there's no major highways adjacent to the site, so there's only local roads. Um, the, top the uh, topography is slightly hilly in the area, which makes it hard to expand the site in the future if you want to do that. And the zone is, uh, the site is zoned as residential zone, so. Next slide. This is our uh, second alternative site. Uh, basically, it's uh, right next to Route 78 in Carpenter Hills Road in uh, Potakon uh, Township. Next slide. Some of these advantages include uh, being along uh, Route 78. It provides easy access for uh, deliveries, construction vehicles, emergency vehicles, and it has uh, freight train access. Um, some disadvantages, though, it's zoned in, our, in the uh, agricultural uh, preservation zone. It's uh, relatively close to some uh, residential homes, and uh, being next to uh, Route 78 and it has easy access is that it could create some uh, security issues in the future. It's also located uh, one mile from our local airport, which on a cloudy day, maybe some airplane might happen to crash by accident into our treatment plant, which would be terrible because uh, it's a vital uh, water supply for the county in the future. And it's also uh, 0 0.6 miles away from a sewage uh, sewage uh, treatment site up uh, stream, which uh, if toxic chemicals were poured into the uh, stream, it would be bad going into the system. Next slide. This is our final selected site. It's uh, in Knowlton Township, which is uh, right by Route 80 here, as you can see. And uh, some of our advantages are, uh, 
Out of all those three sites, this has the best wa source water quality on the Delaware River, which means less cost to the community as a whole when uh, it comes to treating the water. Uh, it's also located in the highway uh, industrial commercial zone, which would allow, uh, allow it to be built without any variances. Um, there's also freight train access for, the, uh, for deliveries that we want to deliver by the freight train. And uh, located near Route 80 in a remote location, and uh, it's easy access for construction vehicles and uh, emergency vehicles and such. Um, it's also located in an area where there's, uh, they're doing future uh, sewers and expansion in the area, so it's always a plus. And there's also a truck facility right there, which means utilities are already there and they don't have to be run very far. This is our basic uh, matrix we made for each site. These are all the, uh, all the things that we were looking at. And we uh, ranked everything based on score. So one was like bad, two is fair, and three is uh, excellent. And so we basically took all three sites, we scored them all up, and we found out that our selected site was the best one of them all and it was the highest score. So now Anthony's going to talk to you about the uh, water treatment process. All right, so basically we chose a conventional treatment process. Uh, here you can see rapid mix, flock, sedimentation, filtration, disinfection, and storage. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, basically this is our overall system, what we came up with, uh, expressing our hydraulic rate line, um, basically showing minimal losses uh, across most of the system. Um, the filter had a slightly larger loss with everything else respectively. Um, showing in our pump sizes, um, pumps 1,500 for the influent and the effluent of 4,500. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is just an overall typical plan layout for um, a typical water treatment facility. Next slide. This is more what ours is going to look like. Uh, basically having backwash coming from our main storage tanks and influent and effluent. That's it. Next. So uh, this is our rapid mix tank, uh, basically with our coagulants and our corrosion control chemicals that we plan to mix. Uh, we're using a 35 horsepower motor to turn this rapid mix tank. Next slide. This is just a little detail of it showing um, what we're really looking at here. Uh, as far as size, you know, 10 feet tall, 5 feet wide. Next slide. Uh, this is to show our flocculation generally, uh, put it to scale as in what it is. Uh, the difference with ours is we're going to have actually three basins. Uh, all turned by five horsepower motors. If you go to the next slide, you can see our three basins equally spaced. Um, we use the same horsepower motor for each one since they were so small, and we plan on tuning those motors to have a gradual uh, deceleration, um, basically so that we finer tune our uh, flocculation process. Next slide. Uh, for sedimentation, just to get a relative idea of what sedimentation looks like again, um, we're going to have 100 meters worth of weirs. If you go to the next slide. You can see the, uh, basically that we have one meter depth allocated for sludge, uh, 10 meter weirs, 10 of them, to accommodate our 100 meters of weir length that we require. Uh, and we have sludge removal as well. Next slide. For filtration, uh, this is a typical filter, uh, dissimilar to ours. Um, our filter will only have granular activated carbon, which was proven in a pilot study that this is all that we're going to need. Uh, based on that, uh, we found the minimal head loss of only Actually, less than 0.5 meters, but we use design for 0.5. This shows the uh, filter detail, again, uh, with our head above it to count for our head loss and our backwash uh, pipes you can see on the bottom. Uh, next slide. And for disinfection, uh, basically, this is our dosing and our residuals that we plan to leave uh, throughout the pipe and through the water system. And next slide. This is, again, to show exactly what we came up with. Uh, we did it in line through gravity instead of in line through pressure. Um, and that, that's basically it. Uh, for storage, we used 40% storage. Um, the storage uh, we took uh, basically from Worcester Polytechnic Institute, who gave the suggestion of 40% storage. Uh, this gave us a lot of storage, actually. Uh, if you go to the next slide. There are 2.6 million gallon tanks. Um, this gave us 16 million gallons in total. And again, you can see our uh, pipe down from the bottom, which is going to lead to our uh, backwashing system. And again, leading to the influent. And that's our storage process. I'm going to pass it on to John who talked about cost of construction. All right, basically we came up with an estimated cost of $106 million uh, for construction and between one and a half to $2 million annually to operate the plant at its initial expected demand. Um, this cost estimate was determined by comparing... Um, go to the next slide. We compared uh, data from recently built plants or plants that are under construction now 
Um, we made a chart that includes uh, the cost of the plant versus the capacity in million gallons per day. And basically we made a line. Um, some of these plants are very expensive for different reasons. Um, so we had to, we changed the number a little bit, but that's basically the formula that we went by. Um, here's a couple of reasons why we think that our, our design is good and why it should be chosen. Um, we're using land that's already been cleared and um, we also designed our plant to have a minimal area of buildings uh, so there will be ver relatively low environmental impact. Um, it's a very good location in terms of being a good distance away from houses, residential areas, so during the construction process the residents of nearby townships won't be affected by noise and dust and trucks and it's also very close to highways so it will be easy for uh, large trucks, cranes and concrete trucks to uh, have access to the site and also emergency vehicles if necessary. Um, the site has different grades which will allow uh, the plant to be designed so that there will be gravity flow throughout the plant and there will be minimal construction, minimal cutting and filling uh, to achieve that gravity thro flow through the plant, which will avoid um, having to pump water through. Next slide. Um, there are also several advantages to the operation of this plant, the way we've designed it. Um, again, the location. Um, also, the plant will be relatively low cost to operate. We tried to go with the simplest, um, the simplest treatment process that was possible. We stayed away from ozonation and other things that would be very expensive because they were determined unnecessary for the source water that we were using. Um, we tried to use chemicals that were cost effective. We used chlorine instead of chloramine because it's uh, cheaper and we don't need as large of a quantity. Also, the plant is technically advanced. Um, there will be monitoring of the source water at regular intervals and that keeps us from having to guess what the source water is and we can more accurately target the areas of the water that need treatment. Um, and again, there are relatively few buildings on the site and so that we won't have a lot of utility use or maintenance. Uh, at this point, I'd like to open it up to any questions that anyone might have.